Uh, today I'll be presenting a workshop on personal statements and CV building, um, which is part of the Zenotes Ambassador Program. Um, and for those of you who do, don't know, um, Zenotes is a, a educational organization that provides access to A-level and IGCC resources such as notes, study sessions, quizzes, etc. that you can find on their website and the YouTube channel. Um, so I work as an ambassador with the team and today I'll be um, presenting first on the personal statement and second for the CV building presentations. OK, so um, to get started, it's very important because um, you call your applications are right around the corner, so it's important to get started on the personal statements, especially for your 12 leavers and um, your 13s. Um, and I think um, a lot of applications have already been submitted. So um, the ones that are coming up in January, February, um, I hope this workshop is useful for you guys. Um, so to get started, um, research on the university. It's very important to know the requirements and procedures of the university you're applying to. Um, and so to increase your chances and to also be well prepared, um, ask others from the university or um, seniors how they got in, um, what they focused on in their personal statement. Um, and if you could read it um, and all universities have different things that they want you to write about. For example, um, they might want you to include something about yourself and make it more focused on you as a person rather than um, in relation to the program, whereas other universities might want um, to know your perspective about how you relate to the major you want to apply to so on. Um, and it is very important to start early because um, leaving it to the last minute, obviously you won't have time to brainstorm and come up with like different branches of ideas. Um, and it's important to sort of um, brainstorm, first of all, get a lot of ideas across and then choose the best ones um, that you think will really make you stand out um, amongst others. And build a structure where you can showcase skills and achievements and then put it all together, obviously. So guidelines and must haves. Um, so uh, it's important to have an introduction which acts as a framework and um, obviously introduces all of the rest of your statement, uh, whether that's your interest, experience, um, how you relate to the measures, so on. Uh, and shouldn't be more than um, you short sentences that are not any more than 25 to 30 words and make sure to um, in your planning to break up the content so that it doesn't seem like a whole big chunk together um, into sort of things like car career aspirations, why this university, why this subject, so on, um, and use a sub sentence structure where you first of all make a claim and then you back it up with evidence. So it um, supports your uh, claim and doesn't make it seem very, very vague um, if it's just a baseless um, fact you're saying. So um, here are a few questions that you could ask yourself. Uh, that you could ask yourself before you write the personal statement, um, which will help you get a better grasp on what you're planning to do. While questions like why you're applying or why you'll be great are cliche, it is important to showcase the best of your abilities while also being self-aware of what you can truly do. And so the next step is obviously to just write it, um, to write the statement opener. Um, do not overthink it because it's just the part of introducing yourself to the admissions officer. Keep it relevant and simple. Don't add too many unnecessary details that take the focus off you. Uh, moreover, avoid opening opening the essay with cliches like for as long as you can remember, so on. And so yeah, don't start with cliche sentences, as I mentioned. Make sure to write about what influences you as a person. As a person, um, for example, um, relate it to your major, relate it to any sort of work experience you've had before. Um, and because the first few sentences sort of make you um, give the first impression, and it's important to have that first impression be good to the admissions officer, so that they want to be hooked in and they want to know more about you as a person rather than just um, uh, sort of cliched um, claims that you make um, that a lot of other applicants may also do. And it's maybe you might not start at the start um, and you may just like focus on coming up with the content for the main body paragraphs um, where you showcase your skills. Um, why do you want to apply to the university? What you, why, do you, why do you think the university sort of deserves you um, and why you deserve to be there? Um, what the university can offer you and what you can offer to the university, both of those cases, that sort of thing. 
Um, so leave the opening line till the end if you're struggling to start at the uh, introduction. OK, and then it's important to include skills and achievements because universities like to know um, all of the competencies that you um, comprise and uh, um, all sort of sort, sort of like positions of responsibilities um, you've had in school, out of school. And if there is anything that makes you unique um, in particular, make sure to include all of those. Uh, and then work experience and future plans, for example, um, if you've had um, if you're applying for biomedical, you may have had experience shadowing a doctor or um, going to a clinic and um, helping out with reception, admin work, that sort of thing. Make sure to include all of those um, and make sure to um, highlight the best ones and maybe hyperbolize as much as you can. And then again, use the sentence structure, make a claim, back it up with the evidence so that it doesn't seem baseless. And ending your statements, it, it's important. Um, so while closing the statement, the conclusion you write should sum up the overall aim of the essay and reflect on the achievements. Um, it should tie back to what you have said at the beginning and to. Um, to make your um, statement further, be more clear and prosper. Uh, proper, you should ask a close friend or family member to proofread the essay for you, um, maybe even a teacher and highlight uh, maybe any awkward phrases or jarring transitions or ambiguous statements that will help you and eliminate them and um, call for a smoother flow of the whole statement together um, to sort of pull, ties it all in. And here are four good qualities of a personal statement uh, that should all be encased in the essay. Uh, it should have values and vulnerability, meaning that your values should speak for themselves. And um, it should also have craft and insight, which means that the structure and technique with which the essay is presented should be well written um, and shouldn't have a sort of predictable cliche moments. And it's important to strive for depth and not breadth because obviously um, it's not the whole list of your accomplishments. It's how your um, accomplishments reflect like reflect your personality and why um, you did it, why you um, sort of if you volunteered, why you did it, what you learned from it, um, and, like if you made any changes, um, so, et cetera. And it's very important, again, to benefit from drafts and feedback. Um, get friends and families, uh, uh, family and teachers to review your essay and give you feedback. And if you see it um, appropriate, then act on it. So lastly, in an effort to make this easier for everyone, we have at Zenotes a community of students and interns um, who are dedicated to helping and supporting um, you at their best level. Um, you can find students from particular universities, um, top universities in UK and US who can um, guide you and you can ask them questions. So that's it for the um, personal statement workshop and we'll be moving on to the CV building now. Um, to the breakdown of CV building. So first of all, what is a CV? It is basically a presentation of your scholar and um, work experience identity um, in your that shows off your skills in a particular field. Um, and it's very uh, it summarizes your skills, relevant work experience um, when you're applying to universities, research programs, so on. And it can help to paint you in the best possible light. Um, so the breakdown how to actually get started. So understand the CV's purpose and um, why and how you can convey your interest and your personality and your skills in that field um, to uh, make sure that you can sort of stand out amongst others. So what to include? You can include contact details and qualifications, skills, work experience, um, previous achievements, so on. Um, OK, so first step is to actually start brainstorming and think about all of the stuff, um, all of the high school achievements you've had, um, whether that's in out school. Um, what did you do? What did you gain from it? Um, if you learned any any uh, particular competencies, so on um, and write it all in like a brainstorming format in a mind map or like a spider diagram, whatever, and then actually move on to the CV formatting, which um, here are three different examples. So reverse chronological, um, here you start uh, highlighting your work history experience um, from your latest job uh, at the start and then moving backwards um, as you go on. And it's the best one because in today's hiring, it's easiest to scan for the ATS, uh, which job employers are looking for, um, and even universities. 
Then functional um, is the one that shows off the most relevant skills to that field um, and uh, talents over the actual like titles, uh, over the actual titles of your jobs um, from your work experience. Um, so it obviously it brings attention to the skills more than the actual um, titles you've um, claimed in in your overhaul work history. And the combination of both of them, in my opinion, is actually the best one because um, you can also state the actual title you've held and then what skills have you gained from that um, alongside. But you move on again with the reverse chronological order. So um, latest job to the to the previous one. Um, and this isn't for this isn't just for jobs. It's also for like internships. Um, if you've held any leadership position roles in organizations, um, if you've um, been in, involved in like sport uh, sport clubs, um, et cetera. OK, so what to include in your CV? So again, contact details, the profile, um, any key competencies, any key skills um, that you uh, that you comprise um, list and then obviously education, qualification date and then grades um, so on. Um, work experience, skills, achievements, projects, volunteering, all of these are very, very important things to include because um, they embody you as a person and um, help sh st make you stand out as much as possible from others. OK, so now this is a crucial question. What if you have no or little working experience? Um, this is very, very important because especially in high school, it's important to um, sort of keep yourself active with different extracurriculars, hobbies, um, obviously out of the um, academic um, aspect because it just um, it helps you improve as a person, um, especially if you have any sort of um, outgoing sports achievements or um, whether that's like with certain government or uh, social groups, activist groups, so on. They can really help you improve as an overall person and it's recommended if you already don't have some of that um, to get started in high school. It's the best time for it. OK, so ways to make your CV actually stand out more. Um, so you can harmonize different parts of your CV. So make it a flowing story rather than just um, having random or like just having work experience on one side and let's say the languages you speak on one side and the skills on the second page have it um, make make it a story so that it flows in and sort of um, hooks in the um, admission officers and the employers more. Um, then actually just um, listing up stuff and emphasize results over responsibilities. So let's just say um, you're working at a job and you, um, for example, you may have been promoted um, and you because you got them a really, really good um, recruitment process or whatever. Then mention that mention um, the results you've had on the company rather than just um, what you did there as um, your responsibilities. Mention if you've um, helped them improve their social impact, for example. Um, mention if you've um, helped them reach out to more people, reach out to um, um, or like gain followers on social media, etc. that kind of thing. And then highlight changes and growth. So if you've um, changed a lot between your roles, for example, you may have moved from sports um, aspects to um, music or um, from academics to more sports based, then mention why and how and what you felt about it, why you did it. Um, it really helps uh, the employers and admission officers look at you and just go like, OK, this person changed from this to this. And why did they do it? Because they had like they knew this wasn't the right thing for them, so they knew they had to change. And that helps them sort of learn more about you as a person. Um, and then use power words, um, which is very, very important. So such as innovative, adaptable, because um, it helps. Um, these are very, very um, sort of job appealing skills that employers and officers look for. Um, so that's very, very important. And finally, um, if you're looking for professional work experience with our team, we have many positions open, such as Xenos contributor, intern and ambassador. Um, and we have a few of these at Parkhouse. For example, I work as an intern ambassador and very soon contributor. Um, so if you're interested, um, you can go on the website zenotes.org and um, find all of their plethora of resources. And yeah, so thank you everyone for listening in. And I hope this workshop um, helped you guys learn something. And thank you.